can't say I didn't know this was coming. This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael, I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I guess I've seen Outlaw of Gore, the 1988 sequel to the Swords and Sandals sci-fi film Gore, which I've also had the misfortune of seeing. Directed by John Bud Cardos, we see Tarl Cabot, the muscle-bound hero of the previous film, return to the planet Gore, this time inadvertently bringing along a comically mismatched friend. Cabot didn't arrive by choice, though. He had been summoned to assist in stopping a plot by Xenos, the high priest of the kingdom of Koraba, to seize the throne. Cabot is unable to stop him and the king's new wife, who also seeks total power, and ends up framed for murder. Now on the run, Cabot must find a way to bring justice against them and restore peace before all hope is lost, or something like that. Much like its predecessor, this movie has nothing really going for it in its story or otherwise. Events tend to just happen because they need to happen, or else there won't be much of a movie in the first place. The story is rather streamlined, which may be a good thing in some films, but here just means that what we get is barren of much in the way of interest or logic. Cabot gets sent back to Gore because he has to be there. The king is murdered because he has to be dead. Cabot fights a bunch of slavers again because he has to, I guess, etc, etc. Character motivation is one part ruled by whatever a scene requires to make them look like one of the heroes or villains, and one part led by whether or not they actually have anything they should be doing. By the end of the film, the lack of any plot logic bleeds into the actions of the characters who start making whatever choices are necessary to get the movie over and done without any sense of development or progression for them. The only thing that changes about these people over the course of the film is whether or not they're alive. Speaking of a lack of change, nothing about this movie's visual style or production value sets it apart from the first. It wouldn't surprise me if the two films were made back to back with how many sets are reused or redressed. It seems as though corners were cut everywhere, from flat and uninspired cinematography, to shots seeming to last forever with little, if any, editing, a sign of them not really doing too many takes. If there were any flaws present in gore, they're also here in Outlaw of Gore. In a few cases, they may even be magnified, such as an audio design and mixing that makes it obvious that all but one of the film's characters are dubbed in English. The only thing about the visuals that is any bit impressive is the amount of extras, though this seems to suggest more or less that some people will do anything for a day's work and a couple of bucks. I'm probably just projecting here anyway. The point is that this movie is more of the same from the first, and somehow has less to say, do, or give. It almost feels redundant to even be reviewing this movie. <sighs> Outlaw of Gore. John Bud Cardos, 1988. Half a star. If you thought that I was going to recommend seeing this at any point, then I don't think I can help you. Well, I'm done here. If you like this review, leave it a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. At least I can rest easily knowing that they never made a third one of these. I can only hope that I didn't just jinx myself. <laughs>